Many of you will be going to work this morning, listening to news of the federal election results that came in last night, and a lot of you are going to be talking about what it means for the country. So I just want to spend a little bit of time talking to you about what it means for the people in my community. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to my constituents for electing me back with a really big mandate. Um, and I want to thank all of my volunteers and many of you who donated to my campaign, shared my social media content. Uh, it made a world of difference in getting the message out on what I'm about to talk to you about right now. So, so thank you. Um, I'm very grateful to have another opportunity to fight uh, for the people of my riding and fight for our country as well. But um, I've been asked, you know, I'm getting a bunch of media requests on this question, uh, like probably a hundred, and I want to go to bed. So I, I thought I'd just address it here. And this is the question of Western alienation. Is it real? Uh, what does it mean? What do we do going forward? Um, so, so here are my thoughts. Um, Western alienation is real. It's a real thing. I just, I've just knocked, you know, tens of thousands of doors in my community, uh, and it, and it came up on many of my doors in, in different, expressed in different ways. Um, but you know, the number one thing that came up for me during my campaign locally was, uh, I actually had a lot of people say to me, like, you need to go across the country and you need to tell people how bad it is here. Uh, and, and, and how frustrated we are. And so I did that. Um, and, and I'm coming to you if you're watching from across the country. It's a real thing. And, and what is it? Um, because I think some people have different definitions for what Western alienation is. I think, from what I've heard in my community, it's, it's just this deep frustration at the fact that there are people in our country who think that um, what we do in Alberta in the energy sector is somehow dirty, but at, then at the same time use energy products to get around or buy groceries or whatever, and then also benefit from the equalization payments who that benefit the rest of the country. So there's this sense that like, well, wait a second, like, it's like sort of like a sense of hypocrisy, right? It's like you can't tell us that our jobs are dirty and that we need to transition out of them while you're using energy products and benefiting from equalization payments. That's, that is where the frustration is at. That's what can't exist. So I just, if, if you're watching this and you know, you're saying, Michelle, um, climate change is, 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 is a real question. Alberta shouldn't be doing this anymore if we want to address the, the question of climate. Uh, I, I want to speak to you um, and I want to speak to everyone else on my feed as well. I do think we have to address the issue of climate change. Um, however, at the same time, there's no substitute good that is going to magically take all of the cars in Canada off the road, that is going to magically replace the fact that we you know, use trucks to import fresh produce from the United States. Um, and in parts of this country, we, we produce energy from carbon, right? Like, like electricity. So the, that is a question for research. It's a question for technology. Um, and it's a question that the world is grappling with, not just Canada, right? We have to look for ways to uh, develop clean energy and make, make it a substitute good for carbon. Uh, and there's many great researchers across this country, here in Canada. Some of, many of the top ones are here in Calgary, as a matter of fact, who are doing that. So to me, if that's the context, then why would we be using and dependent on energy that is produced anywhere outside of Canada? I mean, we have a, a strong democracy where, you know, we ostensibly believe in, in equality and, and, and protecting human rights. We believe um, in the equality of opportunity of minorities, of L the LGBT community, of women. Uh, we have a pluralism. So that is that, that in and of itself is, should be a reason why we are using Canadian energy as opposed to energy that's produced in Saudi Arabia or Venezuela, for an example, right? Uh, and, and second of all, 
our energy, our, our carbon products are produced under some of the world's most envir strictest environmental review processes, under some of the most strict environmental regulations, both from opening a project through to abatement. Like, so, so in terms of a substitute good, what we should be looking at while we're developing clean technology is saying the substitute good for Saudi oil and Venezuelan oil is Canadian energy, right? Um, so, so if you if that's your question, then you should be embracing what we do in Alberta, not just telling us that it doesn't work. And that's part of what Western alienation is, right? Um, I, 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 I had a couple of tweets during the campaign that really upset me. Um, there, there was two. Uh, and I remember it, one of them, somebody tweeted at me, you know, asbestos workers, do you want asbestos workers to get back to work too? Like sort of saying like what um, we do here in Alberta is akin to the asbestos industry. Well, nobody's putting asbestos in houses in Canada right now, but there's a lot of people who are putting oil and gas in their cars every day. So to say that what we do here is, is akin to that is, is ridiculous. It's a false dichotomy. And I've heard that argument over and over. And then, you know, I, I had someone else tweet at me like, wow, Michelle, you know, buggy whip makers, you know, that's the way of the future. Sort of saying like the, 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 what we do here in Alberta is outdated. Well, I bet you the person who tweeted at me went and filled up their car that day. So, I, I mean, you, you can't, the country can't just look at Alberta as this sanctimonious, if we somehow shut down the Alberta economy and the energy sector, that everybody's sanctimonious and we've addressed the issue of climate change. No, we haven't changed our behavior in this country. That's, that's the big question. That's the big white elephant in the room is that everybody talks about wanting to address climate change. Somebody's gonna go to a climate strike, but everybody's still filling up their cars. Everybody's still heating their homes. Everybody's still buying produce that has been flown in from, you know, super kale from California and almond milk. Like, you know, I, I could get into the hypocrisy of some of these things. And addressing climate change is going to take people saying, like, hey, I have a role to play. But what is not, what, what's not helpful in this is somebody looking at my province and the people that I represent in my riding saying, oh, it's your fault. It's your fault. You have dirty jobs. And then going, getting on the bus, which is fueled by what? Gas. So that's what Western alienation is, is it's just the sense of ridiculousness that the political debate on these issues, both on the question of climate and my economy, has boiled, been boiled down into like this farcical thing that Justin Trudeau used for his political gain, right? And that is what ne needs to stop. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh, well, Albertans be better, you know, you shouldn't be feeling this way. Damn right we're feeling this way. Of course we're feeling this way. You know, and, 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 and I wanna be very clear in coming days, what the rest of the country and our prime minister Trudeau and every other party leader needs to do is not mock people that are feeling this way. Anybody who is mocking people who are feeling this way, that is, that is only gonna make things a million times worse, right? I was asked this morning on the radio, um, you know, what could be done to, 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 to take away this sense of alienation, to sort of quell the tide of a separatist movement. Well, we campaigned on that. We've got a scrap bill C69, scrap bill C68, or C48, stop the carbon tax, which does nothing to produce greenhouse gas emissions. We've got to build a pipeline and not just the socialized one that Trudeau has. We have to be building a pipeline out east to our to our refineries out there, right? Like this, Alberta, like you guys, you're using Alberta oil anyways. It's just coming on rail tankers, which is the most unsafe way to deal with this, right? So, so for me, the way to address alienation is to, you know, put away all of these policies that have put us out of work and start getting serious about the fact that Canadian energy, Alberta energy, has a major role to play in addressing the question of climate change because it is a substitute good for more dirty products, number one, and it creates wealth that allows us to research and develop technology like fuel cells, like you know, more efficient energy production capacity, I could go on and on, that is going to be part of that equation. So you know, that for me is where my fight needs to be, is, is, and that is what I'm going to do after I, I sleep, um, 
is, is, is just saying, look, stop all of this noise, stop this crap, because my province has a right to work. Yes, we have to address the question of climate change, but just the rest of the country looking down upon us and mocking this sense of alienation because of everything that I just laid out is very counterproductive to, to our entire country and our pluralism. So um, that is where I, I am going to be going. This is the message you are going to be hearing from me because look, about 70% of my community just said, hey, Rempel, figure this out and fight for us. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And that is where I hope all of you who are watching take this debate. You know, no matter where you're at on very any of these issues, um, I hope that the rest of the country approaches this non-dogmatically, not from a, oh, well, Alberta, you just, you don't have the right to feel this way. So just get with the times. That's, that's not, that's not how this, this, this is going to be dealt with. And frankly, that's not how I'm going to let it be dealt with. So I'm going to bed. I am going to have a great sleep. And then I'm going to probably get in a truck and help my volunteers pull down all of our election signs. Um, but I just, again, I want to end with a, a sense of gratitude and thanks for the right to fight. And I, I also hope that how I framed out the conversation is how we're going forward in coming days and that there's some results that happen quickly because people in my province are pretty cheesed right now. And um, that's not good for, for Confederation. Working hard for you after a long campaign, feeling very blessed and about to take a nap in Calgary. Have a great day.